in the name of God, the merciful and the beneficent, who all of us are grateful for. God's peace and prayers be upon our teacher, Muhammad, who is our healer, our sight's light, and may God's peace and prayers be also upon Muhammad's family and companions. I greet you all in the name of Islam, so may God's peace and mercy be falling upon all of you, as I welcome you to yet another episode of our show, Revolution of Man. We stand today to witness a man who revolutionises himself who revolutionises his own traditions, his own customs. He revolutionises falsehood to withstand what is right, a revolution which every one of us needs at some point. And so we have our own revolution towards the truth. There are so many examples of people who are living their lives in falsehood and with their own knowledge. These people know that they are taking a sinner's path. Their hearts are crushed with pain each time they see people kneeling in prostration and bowing to God. And when these people contemplate their lives, they account themselves as sinners with full acknowledgement. Despite that fact, this person knows that there is only a single moment between them and the truth, between them and guidance, and following the prophet's path, peace be upon him, to ascend to a level that makes them and angels equal, do you know exactly what that moment is? It's the moment that a person wages a revolution from within, the moment one revolutionises against sins and against falsehoods and says, enough is enough, I shall stand again and repent to God and obey him. Do you think that there is one amongst us who's not sinned? We all sin, we all disobey God in our time, and we all have the chance to repent. Are you starting to get an idea on what type of revolution we're talking about today? Today, my lecture is for a large amount of people, and I'm one of these people who've got sins, disobediences, and mistakes. But there is a person whose mistakes are repetitive on a daily basis, because that's the nature of their job. Because this person works in a field of disobedience, a field that involves many sins and a great distance from God Almighty. And if you try to open the repenting subject with this person and try to convince them that they should make a halal living and get their income and money in a halal way, they say, it's too early. If I were to repent now, it's required of me to be dressed in a certain way. I have to look in a certain way and even my words have to be in a certain way. My vocabulary would have to transform and I would have to acknowledge God after every phrase and thank God and people would feel uncomfortable with it. Some people think that repenting is a total transformation of one's life. In some cases, the only barrier to repenting is the fact that those people have created an image in their heads about those who repent. They think that people who repent should have certain specifications. And in order for them to repent, they would have to change their appearance, principle, and even the furniture in their house. Totally wrong. Totally untrue. What is a sin? A sin is using a blessing that God granted you in a way that God does not agree with. God Almighty gave us eyes to see the beauty of the universe, to look at and read his holy book, and to look into your father's face and your mother's face. God has granted you sight to work, but using this blessing against God's wants would be considered a sin. He granted you money? Well, sinning is using that money against what God would want you to invest it in. To repent is merely to use your blessing in a way that pleases God Almighty. That is why there are many people who might be successful in their work, but their work itself is disobedience. A person who is a singer can repent. Leave singing? No. Use your good voice, your good looks, your popularity and people's love to you in a way that pleases God. Shift your abilities from committing and promoting sins and change it around. Use your God-given talents to make a difference, which would mean that your talents, which you feel are being used in a sinful way, can be transformed. They can be turned around. They can be made to be good in the eyes of God. If you repent, imagine what would happen if the fans saw you pray and one of them started praying because you did, and then another, and so on, and so forth. Imagine if one of those female singers with the outfits and the makeup decided to wear hijab or the veil, and how some girls would change their perceptions on wearing a veil and embrace it themselves. 
To repent, my dear viewers, does not mean changing your job location. To repent does not mean you have to change your major or your career. To repent does not mean to change the way you dress. Never. To repent means that you use your blessings in a way that pleases God. In a way that you can look at yourself in good conscience and know that you have done something that in God's eyes pleases him. And so, today we are going to witness a revolution carried out by a man against his own self. You might be shocked when you know who this person is. He revolutionized against sins, even though he was against Islam, and so was his father, who was also against Islam, and the Prophet, peace and prayers be upon him. The leader of our revolution today is Ikrima ibn Abijal. Do you know who his father is? Abijal. Ikrima was on the same footsteps of his father. He stood against the Prophet, peace and prayers be upon him, in Badr and Uhud, as well as the Battle of the Trench. He was a wealthy man, a fighter, and a noble person amongst his people. He had three main traits, wealth, physical powers, and that he was a noble and popular man amongst his people. He used to direct all these blessings against the Prophet, he used his money in battle against the prophet, peace be upon him. He used his influence to gather people against the prophet. And in the battle of the trench, he used his physical powers to fight the prophet. So when the prophet, peace be upon him, proceeded towards Mecca, Ikrima ibn Abi Jahl was heading towards the Romans to join them. Do you know who was the reason for Ikrama's guidance? Do you know who held the key that opened his heart to the prophet? I want you to be the reason of people's guidance. I want you with your major, or use your job and your major, or your talent that God's granted you. Instead of using it in a way that disobeys God, use it in a way that pleases him. And look behind you at all the people that will join you, follow you, and support you. You could actually be an example to those people by changing your ways and using your talent in a way that pleases God. There are times when this person, a celebrity, a football player, a singer or an actor, any one of these could be a much greater and more positive influence and be more effective in guiding people than a Friday prayer preacher. People attend the Friday prayers for religious reasons. However, they might not necessarily relate with the preacher. Imagine, though, that a singer with a huge fan base who God Almighty has granted the gift of voice, of beauty, of influence, and then she announces in a spare of moment her revolution against disobedience and says, I will no longer be the reason for people's distraction away from religion anymore. And she repents and wears the hijab and then starts using her voice in resourceful ways that satisfy God. This person probably has more followers than a Friday prayer preacher. So imagine the effects that would have. Imagine that this person is the manager of a company and all those people, the employees that work for them, uh, in a spare moment, in a fleeting moment, announce that there will be a designated place in the company especially for prayers and who would be the imam no one but the manager himself god be my witness that most of the employees would stand behind their manager to pray some will stand and pray even without performing wudu just for the show some will pray just for their image in front of the manager and some will honestly pray however day after day day in and day out the light of faith will start to break through the hearts of these people and they will ask themselves, am I praying for the manager? Have I no shame for God? And it's at that moment when you will be the reason that those people will change their ways and repent. It's not asked from you to change your career. It's not asked for you to change from your house. Iklima's sister was the reason of his repenting. She had come to the prophet, peace be upon him, and asked, O oh, messenger of God, my brother Iklima has drifted with the sea and wants to follow the Romans. Secure him, messenger of God, secure Iklima. And the prophet replied, I have secured only for that is your wish. 
I want to follow him, O messenger of God. I want to follow him and bring him back to you. So you guide him towards the light. The prophet told her to go, and she added, Grant me a sign, for I know he will not believe me. Grant me a sign or a word that will make him come back with me. Do you know what the prophet, peace be upon him, gave her? We'll know the secret between the prophet and Ikrima after the break. Welcome back to the program, A Revolution of Man. And the leader of our revolution today is Ikrima ibn Abijal, who revolutionized against an era of disobedience. He followed the Romans. So his sister went to the prophet and asked him to grant her a sign so that her brother believed her about the prophet, securing him, and so that he returned with her. Do you know what he gave her? He gave her his head cover, the dearest thing to his heart, in return for him to gain a person to Islam. And so she took that with her and followed her brother to show him the prophet's head cover. And Iklima returned with his sister to see the prophet and asked, what is it that you are calling people to, Muhammad? Monotheism, kinship, honesty, being a good person to neighbours, having good manners? And then he added, I do, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. But, O oh messenger of God, grant me forgiveness from every wrong word I said about you, every wrongdoing. Forgive me about every stand I took against you, O messenger of God. Forgive me for every penny I spent against you and to repel God's way. And so the prophet, peace be upon him, forgave him. Now the revolution, now the time for change. You are strong, you possess money, you have influence. So how do you direct these forces? Isolate yourself from people? Of course not. Some people have the impression that in order for them to repent, they need to isolate themselves from others, change the way they look. I should not wear a suit or a tie. I should not go to the fitness club. I should not enjoy games. I should just sit in the mosque, contemplate, fast, pray, and read the Quran all my life. Never. This is not how you repent. To repent is to be among people. It is to use the gift and blessing that God has given you in a way that serves you and the people as well. So Akrima says, let me read the exact words to you. I hereby swear that I shall repent from every penny spent against God's will by spending double in fighting for God. And I swear that I shall put double the physical effort that I spent repelling God's will in spreading his word. And so he meant to say that messenger of God, as of today, I shall start using God's blessings to stand by you. And today it's asked from you to do the same thing, to assent and repel from God's disobedience. The gifts which God had granted you, you should transfer and use today to serve God, not disobey him. If you were a poet, if you were a photographer or a movie director or from any walk of life, if you're an economist who's dabbled in corruption and had an association with bad deals, repel and repent from it all. Shift the powers and use them for God Almighty. You're not asked to suppress your talents. You're not asked to go out of your ways to repent. You're not asked to make all those gifts given from God to you useless and dysfunctional. No, what is asked from you is to make them work for the purpose of pleasing God. There were many poets from the time of the prophet, peace be upon him, who used to base and construct their poetry against the prophet. And when they converted, they employed their talents for serving God. All of the prophet's companions were against him at some point and they fought him one day. However, when they converted, they had used all of their military powers and creativity to stand by the prophet, peace be upon him. Wasn't Khalid bin al-Walid one of the main reasons the Muslims were shaken in Uhud? Wasn't it him, with his intelligence and military capabilities, who was the reason for the death of Hamza? And 70 others from the Prophet's companions. However, when he converted, Khalid bin al-Walid had not spared the tiniest of his military powers and had made our master Omar say, I swear to the Almighty Allah that I shall make the Romans forget Satan's nightmares with Khalid. And so Khalid had become one of the biggest leaders. Ikrima too revolutionized against the era of disobedience. He took and used all of his power, creativity, manhood and his youth 
which was all granted by Allah Almighty and used it to serve Allah. He became one of the key leaders of the Yarmouk battle and killed as a martyr after he led the battle against the Persians. Men of Islam and women of Islam, to all the geniuses of Muhammad's nation, peace be upon him, to all those who God has granted energies, talents, and given them influence and power, you repenting does not mean stripping you from all of that that God has given you. Repenting means that when we have those nights and days where we disobeyed God, misusing his gifts to us, we can, with one step and in one moment, assent. Rise. It's the revolution against disobedience, transforming that disobedience into a worship of God Almighty, you and those who you love. And I congratulate you if you were ever the reason of someone else repenting, let alone when you become the reason of a group of people repenting, because they love you, they look up to you, and it's your example, that revolution that you've taken, that they are now following. I will tell you and stress again one point. If one person that God has blessed with fame, if they took it and used it in defiance, or a woman who God has given the fame and love of people, used that celebrity power in defiance, in one moment the light of guidance has touched her, and you will find a huge amount of people following on the footsteps of that celebrity. Not for their love of God initially, but for their love of that celebrity. Thereafter, the second step is when they truly become convinced and they truly repent for their love of God, the Almighty. One man who happens to be one of the prophet's companions, peace be upon him, converted because he had loved a woman who had deserted him. She left because he was Muslim. The man followed her from Mecca to Medina and wanted to marry her. And she told him, I would marry you, but you are not from my religion. You are an infidel. You're not Muslim. So he said, I will become Muslim. And he did. He converted, not for the sake of God, but because he loved a woman. When he became part of Islam and mingled with the Muslims, fasted and bowed to God in prayers with the Muslims, he said to his wife, I married you and converted for you, so if you want to leave me, please do, but I will never leave Islam. And she chose to stay with her husband and family. This man's guidance was not for the mere thirst of learning the religion, but for a woman. He loved her and wanted to marry her. A message to all the celebrities from Muhammad's nation, peace be upon him, to the singers, artists and actors, for each person that God has gifted with the present of people's acceptance, be the reason to these people's guidance, just as Iklima ibn Abi Jahal's sister was the reason for his guidance. Be the Iklima of your time, of your own generation. Let God count you as one of his earth's heroes and consider you as a preacher of his word. The prophet, peace be upon him, said in a sacred oration, that God said, whoever brings me back a runaway, a runaway in the sense of a person who runs from his superior, whoever brings me back a runaway, if you help God retain one of his men by guidance and worship, I will consider him a true hero. So bring me back a runaway and I shall consider him a true hero. Imagine that you were the reason for the guidance of Muslim women. And imagine that you were the reason for guidance of Muslim men. The Islamic youth will be thrilled to know about a celebrity that they love, their work, their art and looks, who decided to repent and return the focus of his powers to God Almighty. But it doesn't mean that you quit. It doesn't mean that you break out of your ways or change your way of living. It doesn't mean that you quit your job at the bank. It doesn't mean that you stop acting. It doesn't mean that you quit your production studio. It doesn't mean any of that at all. It only means that you change what angers God so that you please God. Each one of us can do it. Each one of us can revolutionize against disobedience just as Ikrima ibn Abi Jahl had done. And that was the reason for winning and conquering Yarmouk. A message that I want to deliver today to everybody who God has granted the love of people. 
revolutionize against the age of disobedience. Make the revolution to be the guiding light of people. You're able to do everything. May God's prayers be fall upon the prophet, peace be upon him and all of his companions. And we will see you next time. Oh.